Love them or hate them. Two very important parts of both Red Dead Redemption games are the moments that take place in the country of Mexico in the first game and on the tropical island of Guarma in the second. Both are crucial to not only the character development of both John Marston and even Arthur Morgan, but it's vital to keep the story of both these games moving along. Of course, the reasons both the characters find themselves in such foreign territory are for drastically different circumstances, with Arthur alongside other Vanderlyn gang members such as Micah, Bill, Javier, and Dutch himself, all ended up on Gorma after trying desperately to escape the law that had them basically trapped within the city of San Denis, and their only immediate chance to escape the daunting presence of law enforcement without alerting anyone to where they are or what they're up to was by stowing away on a ship that due to bad weather and a fire that erupted on board resulted in it capsizing and those who survived stranded on Guarma. Meanwhile, John Marston's mission to hunt down Bill Williamson was really the sole reason why he ended up down in Mexico. That, and possibly even saving a bit of time as another former gang member of his, that being Javier Escuela, was also down hiding in Mexico. Now we don't actually know definitively if John was going to be sent down to hunt Javier Escuela, no matter what, but whether if he would have had to later on or not, it really doesn't matter. With Javier Escuela being down in Mexico, you might as well knock two birds out with one stone. Oh, you shit. Don't be sure about what you're doing, brother. You saw me out. Didn't that life we had mean nothing to you? Oh, ah, oh, you puto. Oh, one day, one day I promise you, you're gonna regret this. One day's about all you got left. Uh, I hope you and your wife and children rot in hell. But it was with this objective to apprehend his former outlaw companions in order to save his wife and son that explains how and why he was down there. Over time, both the chapter of Mexico and the chapter of Gorma in their respective games have gotten some criticism and even equal appraisal. Mexico was a whole new area to explore. It was pretty much as fleshed out as the area of the United States in that game was, with a decent amount of missions playing both sides of the revolution that was ravaging the country of Mexico at that time. There were more strangers to meet, many places to see. It was exciting, it was a brand new section of an entire map. Although over time, and I mean it does make sense as the game was released back in 2010, but the vast distances from A to B feel pretty barren, as does most of the game really. It's more of a complaint tied to technological restraints if anything at all, and it's not exclusive to just the section of Mexico. However, the many ridges and cliffs that are pretty much all over the place throughout Mexico, making you unable to just cut a clear path whenever and whenever to just go from point A to point B, was a little frustrating for some and the plot did rub some people the wrong way. John is seen as absolute scum in this chapter. He is at his worst by some people's accounts. He holds no loyalty to anyone here and is only here to retrieve the two men he was sent down there for. Because of this, John helps both the rebels in the military and the revolution, doing harm to both factions and caring little for the repercussions of his actions. This left a bad taste in the mouths of many people. And for some, making them do a double take at John as a character, is what he's doing really that good? Initially, it seemed like he was doing the world a favor since he's hunting down cold-blooded outlaws, but now he's partaking in killing people that are fighting a system that is oppressing them, that's corrupt, burning down villages and stripping people from any type of protection that they've had from this oppressive system. Not to mention it does add a little bit of issues within the plot point itself. It makes it difficult to really invest yourself into one specific character or one side within the game's revolution. The only two people John holds any kind of attachment, or appears to anyways, is Landon Ricketts, who basically teaches John how to improve his shooting and gives a proper rundown of how everything is ran in this country. He's also the only one that tells him directly that he is basically going to screw himself over in the end because Ricketts is aware that he is playing both sides and it's a very dangerous game that he's playing. The other character is the revolutionary woman by the name of Louisa. I think out of everyone John meets, it's Louisa who he shows the most compassion for since he does help save her, save her family, and even save the rebel leader Abraham Reyes at her request going to go and rescue him or die trying. Oh, whoa, whoa. I don't think that's such a good idea. Me to near the jail. We'll figure out how to rescue him. 
Mr. Marston, you are truly a friend of this land. So everyone keeps informing me. John even shows proper disgust when Abraham reveals to him that he has no plans of marrying Louisa. Are you gonna marry her? Ha! Marry a Pessy! My dear boy, don't be absurd. I'm going to be the next president of Mexico. My wife will meet ambassadors, kings, other great men. The very thought that I would marry some peasant girl with a tight gun and the hands of a farmer. Well, I really don't think so. My mother gave you luck with it with turning her grave. Interesting. Meanwhile, Luisa won't stop gushing about how she loves this man and they're gonna be married and they're gonna be running Mexico together. Reyes shares that peasant girls believe everything they're told and even suggests John has his way with her when he gets a chance to. Maybe it's a reflection of his own marriage and the loyalty he has to his wife Abigail. It could also be a soft spot he has for Luisa or even repulsed by the man Reyes appears to be. Either way, it can at least appear to be some attachment to her, and that is something that's not there for anyone else. And while we're on the topic of criticism, I always found it a little odd that Abraham Reyes never made an attempt to punish John for his time helping DeSanta or Colonel Allende. The people that are in charge of the Mexican army, you know, the force that is responsible for the killing of many women, children, and even the execution of Abraham's own men. Yes, John did help Reyes take over this region and kill the Sansa and Allende, but he's not gonna be faced with anything. Not even a threat of, if I ever see you down here again, you won't be faced with such a warm welcome by me. Next time you're in my presence, it'll be at the end of my gun for all of my men that you killed. Without that form of punishment or result from his actions, it adds to a feeling of just shrugging off everything John did. As if all the bad he helped perpetrate was forgiven, and he was redeemed just because Reyes is now in charge. The chapter is certainly not perfect, but I would still argue that Mexico, at least as far as John's character development went, was necessary. Rockstar always wanted him to be seen as a morally great character. We don't ever see him do anything completely irredeemable. But his time in Mexico, he does just enough to have us as players question how far is too far to save the ones you love. To return to something we want so badly, Abigail and Jack unfortunately never disclosed too much information on what their time was like in federal custody, so we can't even say his wife and son was tortured or if John didn't capture these wanted men by this specific time frame, his wife and son would be executed or tried for his crimes. Those would be some elements that I think would make what he did more within reason and make the question of what he did for his family was really worth it or not. I think it would have been a much more complicated question. Gameplay wise, the chapter's up to snuff as the rest of the game. Narrative wise, it has a little bit of back and forth to it that as a result of helping both sides of the revolution and the lack of any real long-lasting repercussions can mess up the pacing and flow since you can go to some rebel missions back to military missions which I think was a little bit of a mistake. You should have went military first if we were to keep the part where DeSanta tries to kill you as that's really the definitive point where John works exclusively with the rebels but from there only rebel specific missions would be available and have some of the rebels reference actions they know you did or military strains are under because of DeSanta and Allende's efforts you partook in. It would have helped with the pacing and even the narrative with the immersion going through the roof instead of the small disconnect that we have due to the omission of real accountability. Worm on the other hand I feel has almost always gotten a mixed bag of a reception, especially in contrast to Mexico from the first game. The area in Guarma is not as open or can be freely explored as the entire region of Nuevo Pariso can be. There's no new strangers to meet, and unlike the first game, there's only one side you're helping. It's technically the side of yourself, since you're just trying to get off the island and return to Saint Denis, but because that is virtually impossible given the tight control the authorities have on the island and the strict military response by the authorities in light of the island being stuck in the middle of a civil war, the criticism and appraisals between the two chapters are different. Some also claim that the section of Gorma is lazy and rushed due to the lack of free roam and everything being stripped from you in comparison to Mexico. Your arsenal is completely taken away. By contrast, Mexico, again, a whole new region compared to just a confined area in the jungle of Gorma and then of course a few small select locations that you can go through by means of the main story missions. Gorma is also considered even more out of place than Mexico and because of this, throws the rest of 
the story off a little bit. I mean, if you take a step back and think about it, the events leading up to Gorma finds the entire Vanderlyn gang trying to escape the swamp's a shady bell, an area that's been under attack by the rival gang, the O'Driscolls. Then they storm the mansion of Angelo Bronte. They kill him, rob the local trolley station, of course, not in that specific order, and then they attempted to rob the Bank of Saint-Denis, resulting in possibly one of the wildest shootouts in the entire game, with the gang suffering two of their men dead and one taken into custody. You can always cut a deal! I've given you enough chances. Come on! There's your deal, Dutch. Who's there? Fresh off the hills from one of the most adrenaline-inducing moments in the entire game. Gorma isn't exactly a walk in the park per se that brings everything to a complete standstill. Rather, it's more so the game goes from a set of problems surrounding the Pinkertons, trying to collectively escape the modernization of the world and with it the increased presence in unified law enforcement. They hope to achieve escaping this boost in civilization with some cash in their pocket, allowing them the luxury to buy some land and essentially make off scot-free with their life of crime. The Sandini bank robbery was their ticket out of this hole that they keep digging themselves into and essentially the entire robbery just blew up in their faces this dream crumbled right before their very eyes in the most spectacular way we can get across here no! lenny he's he's dead oh god no and for first time players this entire moment feels like the end. And because all of this seemingly coming to a head, then being pushed into Gorma, it makes it feel like a giant sideshow. You just want to get back to Sandini. You just want to find out how the hell the gang is going to recover if they even manage to. What's happened to those that didn't end up stranded on Gorma? Did they relocate? How are we going to find them? Do we even end up back in Sandini? If found, how is Dutch going to get the entire gang back together and rally under his banner? Does the gang recover? Meanwhile, the death of Jose and Lenny is still hard to process. It's the feeling of being distracted from what appears to be the overall bigger issues. I mean, the threats from the start of the game are basically the same, only now it looks like it's all about to just fall completely apart. But before we can find out how, the, how that happens, or if the gang can or does recover, we have to fight off an island far away from what is the gang's real problems. Out of the frying pan from one set of bigger issues to another pan with less engaging matters, in light of everything else going on. If we were to cut that off and just look at everything happening on Gorma, I mean it isn't engaging, there's a lot of action. Javier does get captured by Alberto Fusar, who is a dictator that runs the island that's essentially a giant sugar plantation where he utilizes the natives for slave labor. The gang is trying desperately to not let him discover who exactly they are since he does have ties to Leviticus Cornwall who does have a price on Dutch's head, but it is a fair point to say it's a sideshow. Luckily though, over time, Gorma's been looked at very differently and honestly has become possibly one of the more important chapters for two major reasons. I would even say it's one of the more underappreciated chapters because tied specifically to Arthur, there's a lot that Gorma is significant for. The first reason, I mean, it precipitates Arthur's illness, the stress, the anxiety, the fear, constant running, the new tropical environment, being sunburned and even dehydrated for a period of time kicks Arthur's tuberculosis into high gear. After Gorma, his health rapidly declines and he never recovers from it. As soon as he comes back to Saint-Denis, he looks incredibly painful pale, he looks beaten, he looks tired. That cough has progressed beyond any kind of redemption. He's long gone practically at this point. His life is incredibly on a ticking timer. On the other hand, during Gorma, Arthur also witnesses Dutch commit actions he never seen him do before. Dutch, what are you doing? Oh, Jesus, easy Dutch. What was that? Horrible old crone. But you killed her. She was gonna betray us, Arthur. Couldn't you tell? No. Well, I got some Spanish. She was. You keep killing folk, Dutch. I would say Guarma is the metaphorical deathbed. Arthur isn't exactly dying yet, but in light of losing Hosea and Lenny, 
two people that are important to him and then witnessing the strangulation of the old woman in the cave and if we were to even push the whole idea of contracting tuberculosis to the side there's no doubt arthur is tired i mean look at him he's been through hell he almost drowned and washed ashore gorma then he's put into custody then he has to fight off the authorities and then as soon as he gets the moment he asks dutch to rest who's already trying to get everything in motion so that way they can get the hell off the island i'll go scope the entrance to that cave Arthur, I need to get some rest. Well, you're right. We all need to relax. <clears throat> what a mess. I... Arthur's not in that position yet. I think just the earliest moments of seeing Arthur and Gorma, that's how he is throughout the entirety of Gorma. He's beaten, he's tired, clearly sunburned, and I would say incredibly dehydrated. I've said it before, the story of Red Dead Redemption 2 is a combination of Arthur and the gang at large. Arguably, I would say, Gorma, when it comes to the story of the Vanderlyn gang, isn't as vital. It's more of a very important role to precipitate Arthur's health and put into perspective this man that he's idolized his entire life. It's one of the moments where he, where he really definitively says Dutch has lost it. At this point in time, he's already seen Angela Bronte get drowned. Now with him strangling an old woman with his bare hands, whether it feels justified or not, it still was a pretty brutal way. It's not like he straight out just shot her and didn't think twice about it. Strangulation is pretty personal. And I think that's also an element to that killing that not too many people take into account. It's not as simple as pulling a trigger and completely forgetting about it. It's personal, it's much more aggressive and it takes more time to take someone's life that way rather than just shooting and walking off. And then if you look at Dutch's demeanor, how he stands over the woman before he engages in the strangulation, and then once called out on it, he tries to justify it by saying she was going to betray them, followed up by he knows a little bit of Spanish, Arthur should just believe him. I mean, Arthur's not dumb. Narratively, when you contrast the two, I think Gorma is significantly superior. With us receiving Gorma and not being able to walk around or free roam the entire island, or even, let's say, a major town, or village, or chunk gameplay wise it was going to receive some type of negative reception in light of mexico coming before it a full new map that you can explore but as i said before over time with mexico representing the wild west and vastness and you know not too much to explore from point a to point b the only major thing is there's strangers and you know new areas to go out and explore but taking a step back and looking at the entire story of red dead redemption 2 and as i said everything leading up to us ending up on Guarma, I don't know if an open section now in a hindsight reevaluating the game would have even worked. Was it really necessary? I think it would have detracted more from the story and the more pressing matters. Maybe it would have made more sense to make us be able to go and explore Guarma in the epilogue as John. Sure, that would have made more sense, but for what it is, if it wasn't for the series of events and everything that even transpired leading up to and happening on the island of Gorma itself, the story would have been drastically different. I don't think Arthur's tuberculosis would have been precipitated. I think during the events of Beaver Hollow, it all would have happened much differently because Arthur would have been much healthier. But I'm passing this on to you. For someone that's played both games, or even someone that's played one or the other. What do you think about these respective sections? How do you feel about them? Do you feel like they genuinely detract from the overall story? Do you feel like they add to it that they're required or the story could have happened with or without them? I'm curious to hear what you have to think down in the comment section below. For me, I think Gorma is narratively superior and much more important to Arthur. Mexico, I think, is hurt by jumping from one side to the other gameplay wise like i said you could argue that there's much more to do but i would still say guarma compared to mexico now is a case of you know being condensed and having to having the ability to explore areas that are much more detailed and richer rather than areas that are a little more barren and sparse and far you know there's not too much to explore from point a to point b but like always my name is cynic thank you so much for watching and like usual if you have any suggestions on what to cover or talk about next please share that stuff down below i'm always looking for suggestions but until next time i'll see y'all later